really is part of the point of this symposium, as you'll see, to show that field work can take a very wide variety of forms. Uh, I'm going to take the view that in most field work, although not in all, as we're going to hear from John Wells in particular, uh, that in most field work, uh, there are four components. There's the actual listening to somebody saying something and looking at them while they're saying it, repeating it, and recording it or transcribing it as appropriate. Uh, I, I very much like to emphasize all four of those uh, that people sometimes forget to look, uh, which is a great mistake. You should always watch carefully. And again, you know, as I'm getting deafer, I find it much easier if I look hard. Uh, and secondly, you gain so much knowledge if you try and repeat instantly what it is that's being said. Again, uh, I'm a great believer that everybody doing phonetic research should be able to pronounce uh, a wide variety of sounds, and you should certainly try and pronounce the wide variety of sounds that uh, you might be happening to be looking at. Okay. The question that I'm asked very, very often is, how do you become uh, a good field worker? Uh, I don't think there is any trick to it. The best trick is the one I've noted there. Find a good field worker and go to work with them. Uh, in, in that sense, uh, I've, I've always maintained that field work is like heart surgery. Uh, if you're a heart surgeon, uh, you, you have to find somebody you can practice on. I mean, it's a sad thought, but do remember that I hope none of us have to have a heart, tra heart transplant or uh, a triple bypass or whatever it might be. But when you have your triple bypass, uh, you're going to be operated on perhaps by somebody who's done it before. But also, uh, there's always a first time for everybody. Uh, and that first time, they may be supervised, and I hope that like good field workers, they've had good supervision, they've taken my first advice, they've gone out with a surgeon who knows what he's doing, or he or she is doing, uh, and uh, have learned how to do it. But uh, when it comes down to it, you can only learn to do good field work by actually practicing doing good field work. Uh, like surgery, you can certainly prepare to do good field work. There are lots of things that you can do. Surgeons go and read books uh, and do anatomy and so on. Uh, we can do very similar kind of things. Obviously, we want to uh, learn practical phonetics uh, in an organized course. I'm a little bit surprised always that uh, in my own university and in a large number of universities across the United States, you do learn phonetics by doing it as a, a practical task of trying to do something, trying to listen and repeat and hear and make noises and so on. Uh, on the other hand, there are some places where that doesn't happen. And I hope that you all, if you uh, see that somebody asks you how to get on and doing field work, you may quite sure that they've been directed to some organized course, uh, preferably one that uh, includes work with native speakers of appropriate languages. Of course, in a general phonetics course, uh, such as we teach at UCLA, that invariably means uh, having a wide range of speakers from a wide range of languages coming in. But we do stress that you have to work with listening to different languages and also uh, doing your own work on a particular language which is unknown to you. The next thing is that, in my view, uh, you should learn all you can about the language you're going to investigate. Uh, by which I mean that you should look up all the old books, uh, all the treaties that have said before exactly uh, how that language works and how it sounds. And by all about the language, I in fact mean not only just uh, the sheer things about its grammar, syntax, and where the, uh, what the sounds are, but also uh, some of the sociological background to it. You, you really should know something about the background of the people that you're working with so that you can not commit any uh, sociolinguistic sins uh, like, uh, well, 
we won't mention the, the horrible things that can happen if you're not sufficiently polite in the sufficiently right places. Uh, in my view, going in to look at a language with no preconceptions is foolish and arrogant. I mean, I know that some people say, oh, don't uh, learn about the language. You'll, you'll get biased by it. Uh, you'll be put off and you'll miss things because you've read the books. I think it's far more likely that the reverse is true. You'll find out perhaps that the book is wrong or something like that. And it's very easy. People will tell you quite easily when you start making mistakes of, of that kind. Uh, as far as possible, I think you should know uh, what you're looking for before you begin. This is again my, my view of how to do scientific research, uh, that you should go in, probably my work would be looking at lots of different minimal contrasts, and before going in uh, and working with a particular speaker, I try and find out as much as I can about the possible contrasts before I leave home, so that I have a uh, a list of possible contrasts uh, that I can look at. Uh, of course, you'll miss some out, but you'll be told when you get there, hey, that word doesn't mean that. Hey, you've missed that. Are you saying this word instead of that? Uh, and you'll find out all those things. Next, of course, you ask about possible gaps. Uh, if you find that you want a word with a particular thing, you've got words that begin with pa, pu, but you don't have a word that begins with ki, uh, a uvula process followed by a high front vowel, uh, ask, is there a word like this? Try and make one up. The odds are that if you do, uh, you either may find one, uh, or as happened to be in that particular case when I was working on uh, Alud, uh, I got some kind of uh, curious look, so it turned out that this was some uh, vulgar word that uh, I was not supposed to be using. Uh, but you can still go on and find out that that sound and combination does exist. So, imitating everything gives you new contrasts. Spend more time on thinking what you want to elicit than on anything else, and write down everything as you go. Rely on recording it if you can, but definitely also write down everything as you go. And I'm a great believer in write everything up as you go. <laughs> Prepare to show your results in the final kind of way to all the world who wants to know about that bit of field work. Now I'm going to hand over right away at this stage, you saw, you came in at the beginning, you saw that we were going to do 10 minutes per person, uh, sorry, 10 minutes for me and then uh, 15 minutes of Matt Gordon. So can I introduce Matt, would you like to come on up?